Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Real 100. I am your host, David Hill, and we are a product of HSPN Sports. And I have the pleasure this morning uh, of talking with a gentleman. Of course, it's afternoon for him. It's morning for me. <laughs> we have to keep all that straight. And wherever you are in the world, uh, uh, hello to you. And I, I have with me today Melvin Briggs the second. Melvin and I uh, had a chance to kind of uh, cross paths uh, in a very, very common way these days, right? All, all through Facebook, <laughs> right? I saw a very interesting event uh, that I thought, oh, this is, this is definitely very interesting. We'll get into the teeth of that event and why we uh, kind of connected, but I, I think it's really good uh, for you uh, to hear Melvin's story. He's got a very interesting story about his own experiences uh, in the game of football, right? Melvin, and uh, so let's let's start with just welcome you here today. Welcome, Melvin. How are things where you are right now? You know, I appreciate you having me on here, David. It's a uh, it's a great day out here. It's sunny, nice crisp fall air. You know, can't complain. I, I'm yeah. very glad to be on the show and getting get a chance to kind of talk to you guys about the APCU our um, athletics webinar and uh, you know, kind of talking about my passions. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. We had a chance to talk with um, one of your colleagues, Kirsten Sires. And she will, uh, she told us a lot about just generally what LRT Sports is all about. And I know that you have uh, a very prominent role with LRT Sports. You are the business development associate, correct? Yes, sir. In that position. So let's, let's tell folks about what that position is, what your expectations are, what, what you're doing in that position for LRT Sports. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So like here at LRT Sports, like our mission here is to help student athletes and parents with understanding college athletics. That's really our motto here. And so what I'm able to do is really just kind of take my passion behind sports. I've been playing football since I was four years old, 17 years of football, played seven sports in high school. Sports is a passion of mine. And so being here at LRT Sports, I'm really allowed and to kind of take on projects that kind of does the sports. Hey, I want to go interview a head coach and talk about what, what are you looking for in a student athlete? What are you looking for on the field? What are you looking for off the field? What kind of measurables is ideal for you? What, what do you want my 40 to be? How much do you want me to weigh? How tall should I be, you know? And I really want to get that information for the student athletes so that they have a chance to really see their maximum potential and find out where is the best place for them. Excellent. I think I think there cannot be enough <laughs> of that sort of process, that kind of information, because what we're dealing with, uh, what is essentially, and that, that's what we try to deal with here on the real, is is keep it real and, and tell the real stories about what happens with recruiting, because there are variances up and down the up and down the platform. And when I say variances, I look at a a system, and, and you know, Melvin, everything has a system, but I look at a system that's really not an exact science. Would we say that? Could we say that's true about recruiting college recruiting high school athletes going to college 100 percent, without a doubt and you've had I an mean, experience you've had experience yourself with it uh and we, we oh, talked a little bit about that and i and i want you to expand on a couple things that that you mentioned to me as we were getting to know each other you played seven sports in high school correct yes sir i've, <laughs> I've played uh, it's pretty extensive i played football basketball baseball track and field across swimming and did cheerleading as well my senior year just really uh, okay <laughs> okay okay yes, sir. Uh, there, hey, <laughs> hey i learned a long time ago melvin that you got to treat cheerleading as a sport my, my my wife at the time she you know she was a cheerleader in oklahoma and had oh, scholarship wow. money for cheerleading so if i if i thought for a second that cheerleading was just something you just dust off um I would have been dusted off. <laughs> okay. yeah, check out the uh, cheer show on Netflix. That will show you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've got to be. You got to be, be pretty dynamic. So I, I, I would, I would venture to say that what football was your best sport? Would you say that? Yes, or? sir. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that football was a very natural sport for me. I mean, it ran in my family. My dad played football when he was in high school with a big high school okay. football star off out in Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Sure. Um, even garnered even garnered some scholarship opportunities from schools like Shawan Co uh, College back back in the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, he ended up he ended up going to North Carolina Central University. He didn't play football there, but you know it's in it's in my genes. You know I've been a running back since day one, running back and linebacker. 
And yeah. as I, when I went to college, I went primarily running back. And, you know, I haven't looked, I haven't looked back since then. It's a passion. Like, I really want to follow in the footsteps of guys like Walter Payton, really just look low, nimble, kind of stay yes. humble to my craft, and, you know, just get the job done. Yeah, no question. Now, Mel, t- tell us, and I'm, I'm looking at you, how we haven't had a chance to meet in person, but give me, give, me, give me your measurables. I mean, you don't have to give me now, but coming out of high school, you were how tall, um, was, um, how big, how fast? Okay, so coming out of high school, I was probably about, I was 5'8 and 3 fourths, I remember. 5'8", 3 okay. fourths, I was 195 pounds, running a 4 5 laser time, about 4'4", four, four, a hand time. Okay. Uh, I think I had okay. like a 37 inch vertical. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Okay. That's those are good measurables. <laughs> those are you excellent. Know, I mean, I mean, I I played eight man football, so it was it was definitely a very difficult transition for me. But kind of kind of going from eight man football to eleven man football. But you know what? Yeah. Staying inside of staying staying inside of a big pro of going to a big program and really committing to being an active member of that, it really requires you to step up and be more sure. just where you're at currently, you know? Exactly. Now, this is fascinating. You played eight-man football. Yes, um, and, and I don't know how many of our, our, our audience or, or folks that are listening to the show are, are involved in eight-man football. A couple of questions coming out of that. What is that actually like and how does that translate to a love of man football that you have play in college? And do you feel like, this is a follow-up question, do you feel like the eight-man p- process helped you or hurt you when it came to the college recruiting process? You know what? I mean, it definitely hurt me in the, in the college mm-hmm. recruiting process. Um, okay. It didn't, hurt, it didn't hurt me as it would have hurt some other positions. The thing about, sure. I think the most, the one competition that comes to mind every time I, th- I kind of get asked this question is a competition I had with, um, with Coach Bob Pagel from uh, Carleton University. He was a head coach at, at the football team at Carleton University. Yes. And I remember kind of talking to my, to the coach and we were kind of talking about like, about like, hey, like, how do you see me as a player? Like, like, how do you think, like, why am I your recruit? Why, why do you think I'm a, I'm a top recruit for? Okay. And he told me, well, when we recruit, we don't just recruit guys based on where they're at right now. We really look about potential. And the thing is about a running back is so much of being a running back is instinctual and natural. Yes. Whereas if you were a quarterback, it's different when you have three extra guys where you have having to read on defense. Yeah. And, you know, so that transition really was for me was because eight man football is really about speed. It's really a speed game. Okay. I mean, there's, really, there's essentially two levels. Just not, it's very difficult to have a third level without sacrificing your, your, your first level or your second level. So you really, okay. most, most of it's like a box defense. So, okay. okay. So really you break the outside corner and you're gone. So I would have like, I okay. think I had my senior year, I had like four or five games with over 300 yards and like six or seven touchdowns because once I broke the outside, okay. I was gone. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so, I mean, it's, it's, an oppor- it's a game where you have a lot of opportunities that you have to be able to take advantage of very quickly. And so I think that's an advantage that shows coaches that you're able to make a decision very quickly and you're able to make a full impact on it, a full impact on the play, score touchdowns, big, you know, those big game-changing plays and able to make an impact very quickly, you know. So those are really – excellent. Yeah. 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 That's excellent. No, I didn't even – and this is why it's good to talk about it because I didn't even really think about – I don't think as much football I've been involved with from coaching to playing and everything, I don't think I've ever really had an experience with an eight man game and where the real emphasis of it is. And, and that I can see how speed becomes a real factor. Um, and so if you were looking at a, a young man from a recruiting standpoint, looking at a player from a recruiting standpoint, and you wanted speed and instincts, instincts, making decisions quickly under duress, that might be something that you look at and you're looking at the measurables. And when you give me your measurables, you know, height and weight. And I think about these things and you have to, because when you're talking about making a transition to major colleges, that's a factor. So right. height and weight and speed, it sounds like uh, that you had some potential to maybe be looked at by big schools. Were there, were there big schools involved in your recruiting process? How did that go? Um, and I know that you wound up where you wound up. We'll talk about that in a minute too, but tell me what was that process like for you once it was time to start looking at schools and make decisions? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, there were, there were, the big school definitely came on toward the, toward the second half of the recruiting part of my, of, of my pro, of the process. Um, sure. one of the first big schools that like, really came pop up into my recruiting process was Wake Forest University. They kind of popped up my freshman year. They informed me okay. that they saw potential and that they wanted to kind of keep an eye on me. Um, okay. So that was kind of what happened my freshman year, starting around my, toward the top of my junior year, I started talking with Furman University. Um, and that really, that really peaked up really high up, up okay. until my senior, senior year of college and my senior year of high school, excuse me. And uh -huh. that was really, my senior high school was really when things began to take off. I really kind of solidified, my, solidified myself in the, air, in, the, in the triangle area as a top running back. I happened to play around the same time as Bryce Love and Naheem Himes and the Johnny Fraser, they're all from the area. So, you yeah. know, Dexter was yeah. playing at the same time. So there were some big oh. names <laughs> in the area that you kind of had to keep yeah. up with. And yeah. so, so like being able to keep my name consistently playing eight man football, yet being able to come out the pack and be up there with these guys' names, where they put them in the radar to bigger schools. So next thing you know, I get a DM from UN, from UNC asking me to come down to their first home game as a recruit okay. and like that really kind of like let things kind of start growing and blossoming and you know <laughs> unfortunately i wish i had gotten a chance to go to my dream school wake forest had it had an okay. after my <laughs> after, yeah. after i had gotten into oakland college uh early decision too but you know what like okay. it really was it was it was it, it, was, it told me that i had the ability to play football at a division one level playing yeah eight man because yeah. a lot of people think that playing in football is the end of the story. But like here I am saying that you have the opportunity to be looked at seriously by power five programs. Sure. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's a great, um, that's a great synopsis of the entire experience, Melvin. I think that, you know, cause certainly no one listening to this should think that I'm playing eight man football is, is, is a joke or eight man right. football doesn't give you a chance or anything like that. I would never want anybody to think that because football is football and it transfers. If you have the tangibles, right, right. you'll transfer that game at whatever level fits. Now you went to Oberlin college. You mentioned, so I think this is important to mention too. You were admitted, admitted to Oberlin college early decision. Yes, That's right. a far different process than, going and being recruited to play football at a Wake Forest, at a University of North Carolina, et cetera. It doesn't work that way. What does early decision mean for you as a student first, uh, then also as an athlete? What does, how, does that, how does that work for you? What is that like when you say, okay, Oberlin's a place I'm in as an early decision admit? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's very important to always remember that first and foremost, you're a student. It, when you hear the word student athlete, student comes first for a reason. Without to the classroom, there is no athletics to follow. And so when you ha when you get recruited by by Division three schools, it's primarily off of your academics. They're academic institutions, and as and as a result, especially high academic schools like Oberlin, it's really yep. important that you get what you call an early read, and then which is okay. up first before your recruiting process begins, the coaches will run an early read through, through their admission um, and do the admissions office will kind of either say, hey, this, this recruit right here has the, has the ability to get into our school. Their test scores look good. Their GPA looks good. Yeah. They're, they're all checking, everything checks out, continue on their process and you're able to continue okay. on. And then when you decide, hey, hey, I'm gonna go to Oberlin College, you have an option. You can go early action. Early action means that you're not, a fit, you're not formally committing to the school, which means that there's no legally binding contract that you're signing. You're just saying, hey, this is an upper priority for me. Like the school is like, if I get in, I will most likely go here, but I'm not committing to go here. Which okay. shows, which demonstrates to the school that, hey, I have an extreme level of interest in your school. Like, yeah, let, <laughs> let me in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's early action. But, yeah. different, but then you have early decision. Early decision, that's different. Early decision is a legally binding process. So there's okay. some schools have two early decisions periods, and first one in the fall and the, sec and the second one in the spring. Some okay. only have one, but typically they, typically they do fall and spring. 
okay. your early, 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 your early decision process means that I, this is my first part, this is my first choice. If I get admitted into this institution, then I will withdraw all applications. And the only way you can really get out of early decision is if you financially cannot afford the institution. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so that makes sense. That means, so like, if you're one of those players who are like, hey, I have, hey, 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 like, look, I want to go to an Oberlin or I want to go to like a Harvard or something like that or to a, a U Penn, and you may mm-hmm. not have a 4.0 GPA, but you may have high test scores and you may have okay. this, this extracurricular and that extracurricular and this right here, and you may have a resume that may kind of save you. Well, your last saving grace is your early decision because this, okay. because your decision means that no matter what, you will go to the school, which gives the school an extra incentive to say, hey, despite the fact that he may not have a 4.0 GPA, he does yeah. have qualifications. And he's also saying that no matter what, if I get into the school, I will be going here. So okay. it's, a great, okay. it's a great alternative for those recruits who are really on a cusp academically, who are looking to kind of make that final push to their potential dream school or to the school okay. that they the school that they really want to go to early decisions okay. that I would recommend. Okay. Yeah, that was an excellent explanation <laughs> of a of, of a process. These are the things that I don't think everybody really understands. And then when you add to that the element of the fact that you want to be involved in intercollegiate athletics uh, of some sort, that adds another layer to the process. And so, right. you know, balances, uh, it, it has to balance out in terms of decisions and, 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 and ideas and, and all of that has to balance out when you add the athletic endeavor as well to it. And right. I think yeah. that, that that helps a lot. That explanation is, is very thorough. Um, and it's, it's something that folks need to really digest because you don't know really what level you're going to play. You don't really know until things start to materialize as they did for you and all things fall in place. And you went to an excellent school, Oberlin. Oberlin, I know Oberlin. I was at DePaul for years, and uh, yeah. we did play Oberlin, I think, at one point in time. But um, I know the value of that institution from, a, from an academic standpoint. You're talking about a very highly regarded uh, uh, academic institution, and that's great that you had a chance to see.